Hey there, today I'm going to briefly go over how to use Vercel Blob, which is one of Vercel's most recent serverless storage solutions. Now, Vercel Blob allows front end developers to store and retrieve any file with an intuitive promise based API. Now, before we jump into things, I do want to mention that currently Vercel Blob is in private beta. So if you want to test it out, you will have to sign up for the waitlist, which I will link in the description below. Now, in this video, I'm going to walk you through how to use Vercel Blob in a Next.js application, although Vercel Blob is supported with all frameworks or no framework at all. Now, I also want to mention that the code I'll be walking through in this video is available at our templates marketplace. I'll link that in the description below. So if you want to go clone the code and follow along, feel free to do so. All right, let's dive into things. Now, first, let's take a look at what we're going to be working with. So here we have a simple Next.js application that features an image uploader. The app allows users to select or you can drag and drop an image, preview it, and then upload it to Vercel Blob. So let's open this code in our text editor and take a look at what's going on. Now let's start off in our page file. This file contains our header and footer, but more importantly, it contains our uploader component, which is the heart of the application. So let's open this file and check it out. Now this component manages the image upload functionality. It uses useState to keep track of the selected file. So if we scroll down in our HTML, we'll see we have a form with an input that accepts a file. The onChange picture function is called when the user selects an image using the file input. Now this function checks the file size and ensures the image does not exceed 50 megabytes. It then sets the file state and reads the image data using file reader so that we can display a preview. Now, when the user submits the form, the on submit event is triggered and the app sends the image data to our API route using a post request. Now, this API route is responsible for handling the image upload and is where we're using Vercel Blob. Before we can use Vercel Blob, there are a few things we need to do. So first, we need to make a new Vercel Blob store. To do this, we need to go to our Vercel dashboard and let's move into the project that we're currently working in and we'll click the storage tab. Next, in the right-hand corner, we can click the Connect Store button, click the Create New, and then select Blob. Now, we just give our store a name and finish creating it. Now, next, let's grab these environment variables we're provided with, and then back in our code, we'll create a new .env file and just paste these values in. Finally, before using Blob, we need to install it into our project, so we can do so by running npm install at Vercel slash Blob in our terminal. Now we can use Vercel Blob in this API route by importing it like this. Okay, now our post function receives a parameter, rec, which contains our image data in the request body. So here we're getting the file data, and then next we are getting the content type of the image from the request headers, and then we're generating a unique file name using Nanoid, ensuring that each file has a distinct identifier. Finally, the put function from Vercel Blob is used to upload the file to Vercel's Blob storage. It takes the file name, file data, and an options object as arguments. In this case, the options include the content type taken from the request header and the access set to public to make the upload file publicly accessible. Finally, this function returns a JSON response containing the information about the uploaded blob in the response body. So if we move back into our uploader file, you will see we are getting the unique URL that has been created for this file upload and returned in the response, and we're displaying it in a toast. This URL can be used to download the image as well as to query our database. Now, since we already connected our Vercel Blob database to our project in the beginning, once we push this code up to our project, Vercel Blob will automatically work with the next deployment without having to add the environment variables manually. So here's our app in production. You see I can upload a file and the unique URL is displayed in this toast. If I click it, we see we download our image, but I can also use this to query our database. So I'll go ahead and use this URL that was returned from the API route. And if we go to our storage tab in our dashboard, click on our blob store and scroll down, we can search for this URL in our database. So if I go ahead and paste in the URL, we can see we have all the details of this file and we can even download it. Okay, so that was just a super quick overview of how easy it is to get started with Vercel Blob. I hope you enjoy this new Vercel feature. As I mentioned earlier, this template is available at our templates marketplace. So if you want to go clone it and get started from there, I have linked that in the description below. 
We also have some other blob templates with other frameworks, as well as just a variety of templates available at this marketplace. So I really recommend checking it out. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. And otherwise, thanks for watching. Bye.